One of the important things God will have us do as a body going forward is to yield ourselves unto the Lord. God is demanding that we yield ourselves unto him. And that's what we are going to be talking about today. We are going to be throwing a little bit of light. We did that two Wednesdays ago. We are going to go back to it and um, look at it again. The Lord will want us primarily as a body to learn to yield ourselves. That's the first step going forward. To yield ourselves unto the Lord. You and I to learn to yield ourselves unto the Lord. Now, reading from Romans 6, and uh, let's cut it short. We read from chapter 12. We'll go back a little bit later, but let's start from verse 12. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Praise the Lord. So the first thing we must begin to understand is that our yielding to God is not arbitrary. It's not hanging in the air. It says we should yield our members as those who are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, when you go back in the Romans chapter 6, Paul begins to talk about our old man being crucified with Christ and we being Risen up also to newness of life in Christ Jesus. I'm just paraphrasing. And talking about Jesus, he said, Unto sin, he died once unto sin. But now that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And Paul says, Recon ye yourself also dead unto sin, but alive unto God. So when we begin to talk about yielding ourselves, we are talking about yielding ourselves in reference to, in reference to who we are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, that's a very important principle. And that's the difference between works and faith. Okay, we continue. It says, Neither, 13, Neither yield yourself members, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Brethren, one thing we must understand is that there are two dimensions of reality. There is the dimension of reality in the spirit. And there is also the dimension of reality in the flesh. Praise God. Now, there is a physical reality. Amen. And we don't deny that physical reality. But there is also a reality in the spirit. So Paul is writing to us to yield our members unto God based on the reality that is in the spirit. Praise God. Paul wants us to so say, who are you in the spirit? Live like unto who you are in the spirit. Praise the Lord. You know, for a lot of times, people, when we tell people or when people are told to do something that is right, especially believers, it's as if, I mean, for some people, oh, but I don't really feel like doing this. You know, I'm not interested. You must always remember that there is a reality in the flesh and there is a reality in the spirit. The new man that you have within you, the new creation man, if you are born again, and if you know that you know that you are born again, that new man in you loves God to the max, if I may use that word. That new man loves to pray. That new man loves to tell the truth. You now may not feel it that way. Praise God. Sin may be giving you a different impression because there is a reality in the flesh. But Paul wants us to yield our members as those who are alive. Amen. That life is not a life in the body because before you gave your life to Christ, you were not dead. Because if you were dead, you wouldn't give your life to Christ. You would have already been dead. So, the life he's talking as a life is talking about a life in the spirit and not a life in your body. Praise God. So, he's making reference to who you really are in the spirit. Praise God. So, he says, yield your members. So, what is the example? I don't feel like praying. That's a reality in your flesh. But your spirit man is called the house of prayer. Amen. And Paul is saying, yield your members. 
Now, let us look at something which is very important. We go to verse 14. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. Now, when somebody says, for example, okay, let us go back a little bit to make sense out of this. this. Let us look at 12. 12 says, 6, 12. It says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Like I said that time, if somebody says, Let not, if there is a let not, it means that something is trying to reign. Praise God. You don't tell somebody, let not, if there is nothing. For example, you don't tell, you can't come and tell me, don't go to the moon. That would be stupid. Because there is no way I can reach there. Amen. But let us say it happens in life that now people can go to the moon for tourism. You can come and tell me, don't go to the moon. Because there is an avenue for me to get there. So when Paul says, don't let, let not, it means that something is trying to, so he says, don't allow that thing to happen. Amen. So you may feel like not praying. You may feel like not reading your, the word. You may feel like not meditating. A lot of things come to us. Paul is saying, don't let sin reign over your mortal bodies. Because what he's trying to do is trying to keep you in the reality of the physical and to deny the reality in the spiritual. Praise God. But he says, if we yield ourselves to the spirit, if we yield ourselves instruments to God as those that are alive from the dead, what happens? We read verse 14. He says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. In other words, Paul is trying to tell you, see, in the dispensation of the law, there was nothing within them. They only had the law outside to follow it. But Paul is telling you that there is a grace, there is an ability now within you. In this new dispensation of time, God is writing his law in your heart and in your mind. There is something within that gives you the ability. So Paul is saying, if you would yield yourself as people that are alive from the dead, amen, that grace that is within you will rise up because you cannot overcome sin. So when he says sin will not have dominion, you, dominion over you, he's not talking about you, power and might. You will not win that battle. You have never won it anywhere. You won't win it now. What makes the difference is the Christ that is within you. But there is a responsibility. The first responsibility is that we must say, no, we are not of the flesh anymore. We are of the spirit. We may not feel like it. Praise God. You know, you know the flesh is about feelings, the way I feel. The way I feel. I feel like praying. I don't feel like praying. I feel like being nice. I don't feel like being nice. I feel like this. That's about the flesh. Amen. But we must understand that there is a reality of who you are in the spirit. And Paul is making a demand to say, yield your members. This your body. Cause it to align to that which you really are. And from within you, the grace of God will rise up within you. Sin will not have dominion over you. Praise God. Okay, we move on. To verse 16. In verse 15, he says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? He says, God forbid. 16. That's where we are going to. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now, Paul in verse 16 is telling us a spiritual principle. Amen. That's why he was saying from the other beginning, he says, yield your members. Because if you allow your members to be yield to the flesh, the flesh will have the dominion over you. If you give your members over to the spirit, the spirit will have dominion over you. So Paul is saying here, he says, to whom you yield yourself, to whom will become your master. Spiritual things can dominate us. Praise the Lord. That's what he's trying to tell us. He's trying to say that if we yield ourselves as a servant... Amen. Unto obedience, righteousness will dominate us. If you yield your members unto sin, sin will dominate you. Praise God. Now, but I want us to see something here which is really important. When we go to verse, remember it says in this verse 16, whether of sin unto death or of obedience, I want you to take note of that word, obedience unto righteousness. Now, we continue in verse 17. Take note of that word. It says, But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. So your obedience is to a doctrine. 
your obedience, our obedience is to a testimony. Praise the Lord. From verse 1 to verse 12, he's talked about how we have died with Christ, we are risen with Christ. He says, so when he's talking about an obedience to that doctrine, that you were dead in Christ and you are now alive in him unto God. Praise the Lord. Are you getting the picture now? So he's saying you have obeyed from the heart. So when you are acting, you are not acting just because they say go and pray, so you go and pray. They are not acting because they say come to church, you come to church. No. You, when you are acting, you are acting because you know that there is a reality in you. Amen. There is a reality in you. So anytime you obey the testimony of Christ concerning you, what you are doing is that you are strengthening that man that is within you are giving him strength. If you will continue faithfully in it, a time will come when he will dominate you. Praise the Lord. A time will come when he will, you will now become a slave to righteousness. Praise God. You know, I was thinking about it some days ago and I said to myself, we don't realize it because usually it's first the flesh and then the spirit. But you know, all that we have come to be before we gave our life to Christ we have learned on righteousness. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You may not realize it, but we have consistently been yielding ourselves to the flesh because then we did not know God. We had no idea of God. So all we knew was how we felt, what we were told, the society. So by this natural disposition, that is all. So unconsciously, we were yielding ourselves all this time, unknown to us, we were yielding ourselves to the flesh. So now something has come up. You say, oh, there is a new way. It now begins to look strange. But the truth is that we have been going the opposite way for a long time. We didn't just know that it was so. Praise the Lord. So what Paul is trying to tell us to do is that as we yielded ourselves to unrighteousness, we should also yield ourselves unto righteousness. Praise God. These are spiritual principles that we cannot, we cannot do away with. Initially, it may be difficult. Amen. If you are used to sleeping from morning to from night to morning and all that, and now you have to get up to pray, now you have to get up to break your fallow ground and to sow in righteousness, it's going to be difficult for a while. Praise the Lord. But if we will stay with it, the Lord is telling us from His Word that righteousness will have the dominion over you. The things that God has put in your spirit, man, they will begin to come alive. Praise God. They will begin to spring forth. Hallelujah few days ago, you know, I was just meditating and the Lord was telling me, you know, a lot of times we think that we are, when we come to church like this, the things we read, the things we hear, that is all. But that is just in the conscious level. There is also the subconscious level, which is the spiritual level. The things you are hearing now, you are just, okay, Brother Henshaw said this and this and that. But in the realms of the spirit, what is being spoken of God, your spirit man is assimilating it. Praise the Lord. And he's using that information. And he's building himself. That's why sometimes you'll be sitting down and then something will just pop in your spirit. Why don't you go and... Sometimes it's from the words that you have been hearing. Take for... I'll give you a good example so that you can understand. You know a little child. As a child is growing up. You know we teach the children. Don't do this, do this. But even as parents, sometimes you'll be like, who taught this one this thing? Who taught this child this thing? Who taught this child this one? You know, you know what is happening? All the information he's getting, his subconscious brain is putting all that and creating new things. That's how your spirit man works. As you take up the word of God, you see, all you are doing is you are sowing into your spirit. When you sow into your spirit, from your spirit you will reap eternal life. Because, you see, he's a creation of God. Just like your natural creation. And he has potentials. So as he's receiving edification, as he's receiving nutrients... Those things that God has already put in him, those things are springing up. Praise the Lord. So sometimes it begins to surprise you. Some things just begin to happen. You can't even explain. Praise the Lord. You know, that you begin to get direction from your spirit. Sometimes you're just thinking about a revelation just comes from your spirit. Hallelujah. So don't look at coming to church is only the things you are taught. Expose yourself to the things of the spirit of God. Expose yourself. This one we are giving you is the seed. The fruit is going to come from you. Praise God. The fruit is going to come from you. So give opportunity for your seeds to be sown. Sow in righteousness. So that you will reap in mercy. The mercy we are talking about is the things that God has already put in you that you did not ask him to put. 
We did not, in God's new creation, man, neither you nor me, we were not there. But that man that he has created, he has created him in the image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. So as we allow ourselves to be fed of the word of God, as we yield our members, you know, to righteousness, what we are doing is that we are priming our spirits so that the things of the nature of God begins to comfort from our spirit. Praise the Lord. Suddenly you realize that the things you couldn't do before, you are, you are doing them. Suddenly you realize that when you speak a word, that time when you pray for something, you will bind, bind, bind nothing. But this time in the dream, when you rise up, you, that demon just flies. Praise the Lord. So you must realize that there is a work being done within you more than just coming to sit in church, just more than reading your Bible, just more than hearing a message. These things that are being done are like seeds being sown. But there is a fruit that is coming out. That's really, really important. Praise the Lord. Verse 20. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. That's what Paul is saying. He said, what food had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruits unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Praise God. Now, it's very strange that Paul is writing like this. Look at how he's putting it. You are free from sin. Is that your experience? <laughs> are you free from sin? <laughs> Is that your experience? You are free from sin. He's telling you you are free from sin. He's writing as if, I mean, you are good to go. But you know what? That is the truth about you. Amen. That's the truth about you. So when he's saying, let not sin reign in your mortal body. In this new era, sin is the intruder. Praise God. Sin is the intruder. And you have to see, you know, you have to see it that way. If you keep thinking that I am the person that still likes to lie, I am the person that still likes parties, I am the person that still likes worldly music, that's what your mind tells you. That's, and you know, when you hear worldly music, you even feel good about it. But that's a lie. Praise the Lord. It is a lie. That's a reality in the flesh. And you know what? The flesh will always be the flesh. That's a reality in the flesh. But Paul is writing... As people that are alive from the dead, because that is the truth concerning you. But you can have you have a choice whether you will stay, whether you will walk in the light of who you really are, or whether you will walk in the light of who you are not real, who you really are not. Praise God. That's very important. Okay. Now, having laid that foundation, let's quickly look at how do we yield our members unto God. The first thing the Lord will want us to understand is that we will yield our members, the members of our mind. Number one is yield your mind. Yield your mind. And how do we yield our mind? Let's go to Psalms 1. Starting from, let's go to Psalms 1 verse 1. So the first thing to do is that we yield our minds. Paul says, yield your members. First thing God wants us to do is to yield our mind. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Now, when you read this verse 1, that verse 1 describes the flesh completely. I think you will agree with me. Praise the Lord. Stay on verse 1, please. We'll go to verse 2. Stay with, stay with me on verse 1. Verse 1. He says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsels of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the unscornful. That describes the flesh and un the unbelievers clearly. Praise God. But look at verse 2. Starting to yield the mind unto God. Verse 2. He says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Praise God. You know the words? This man in verse 2, 
would have been exactly what the man in verse 1 was. But you know what he's doing? He's yielding his mind unto God. Now, that is what the man in verse 2 is doing. Go to verse 3. The man in verse 2 is yielding his mind. That is his own path. He's, he's meditating. But what is going to come out from that meditation is not in the power of the man in verse 2. Praise the Lord. This verse 3 is an operation of God. The man in verse 2 cannot make verse 3 to happen by himself. But because he is positioning himself in a particular place, verse 3 is taking place. You know what Paul said? He says, Paul says, I have planted. Apollos has watered. But he says the planter and the waterer are nothing. What is important is God that makes the increase. Praise the Lord. So we are not calling anybody here to be a righteous man on yourself. We are calling you here to, be, to position yourself. Because we know from scripture and from the spirit of the Lord that there is a river that is flowing. And you can drink of it. Praise God. You can drink of it. You don't need to struggle. It's not a matter of struggling. It's not, you're not, we are not asking anybody to be what you cannot be what you cannot be. But God, God is he that makes us. The Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. This differential is very important so that you know your role and you know the role of the Spirit of the Lord. So that you're not trying to do what you will never do, will never succeed in doing, and you'll get frustrated. You know what I've learned in Christendom? A lot of times people are trying to do verse 3 by themselves. And whether it's Christian, something of Christian good or something of bad, when you step into the shoes of the Holy Spirit, He will just back out. Whether it's a good thing you are doing, or whether it's a bad thing, or it's immaterial. Once you step into His shoes, He will just back out and stand until you have frustrated yourself. And then you say, Lord, help me. Then he will come back to his place. So don't think that because you are praying and because you are doing this thing, means that, oh, it, no, no. You must get the principle right. Praise God. So we see verse 3. Verse 3 is what the Lord is doing. He said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So he's located himself. What is sustaining him is the river of water. You are not the creator of the river. You can't create that river. That's the river of life. You can't create it. It's only God that does that. But he has positioned it. So when we align our members, when we yield ourselves, what we are doing is that we are aligning ourselves to that which is already in existence. This is not something of abs being abstract. Because sometimes we think it's abstract. Okay, we are practicing righteousness. What do you mean by practicing righteousness? You are the righteousness of God. You don't practice righteousness. You, be, you are a righteous person. Hallelujah. You walk in the light of who you are. You're not practicing righteousness as if you're practicing, a, you're practicing a, a exercise. No. Even if you want to use exercise as an example, it's the same thing. You're not, you, you're not the creator of your body, but if you do some certain things, the body will respond to some certain things. So, or certain things, let me not some certain, certain things. The body will respond. Spiritually, it's the same thing. So it all goes back to the reference of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You cannot miss that point in your Christian life. Praise God. This is an operation of faith. So when I'm saying something comes to me and says, oh, this, this is, and I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it because I'm a Christian, so I won't do it. No. I'm not doing it because this is not who I am. Praise the Lord. You know, when Paul was writing to the church, I think in Ephesians, he says, lie not one to another. You know what he said? Don't lie to another because seeing that you have a new creation, you know, and you people are brethren. So even the reason not to lie is different from the Old Testament. The Old Testament said, do not lie. That is like a law. The New Testament said, don't lie because that's not who you are. Praise God. Don't lie because that's not who you are. Don't steal because that's not who you are. Praise God. You are a new creation. You may not feel like it, but that's the truth about you. The, you know, one thing we must understand in life is that the truth may not necessarily be your experience, but the truth can be your experience. Praise the Lord. The truth may not be your experience, but the truth can be your experience. Not many of us are conscious that there are radio waves. 
maybe if we're not, you know, if we're not educated in physics and all that, you may not realize that there are radio waves here. But does that take away the truth that there are radio waves here? No, it doesn't. But when you bring the right instruments here, you, to prove to you that truly that there are radio waves here. And when you key into the spirit as you ought to, you will receive the proof that you need that God indeed is within you. Praise God. That's why when Paul was right, he said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that perfect will. You may experience what is that perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So, verse 3 says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. Does a tree struggle to bring forth fruit? A tree doesn't struggle to bring forth fruit. Once it is in a right place, the fruit must come out. Amen. Don't struggle to be a Christian, my brothers. Don't struggle. All you need to do is take your responsibility and be who you are. It may not be comfortable for you. Amen. But if you stay with who you are, if you stay in faith, believing, I won't lie because this I'm a new creation man. According to the testimony of who you are in Christ, it will not be long. You will be seeing some things, even that thing, it will surprise you. Praise God. 